Dzień dobry, Dzień dobry, dziękuję. E, chciałem zapytać, e, jakie emocje towarzyszyły ludzi w tym e, drugim secie, bo no, na trybunach było, było tak, e, no, taka, po tym pierwszym secie była pewność, że, że ten mecz nie, nie potrwa długo. E, no i... Coś, że na pewno um, rzadko zdarza mi się taka sytuacja, że mimo wszystko nie domykam meczu wtedy, kiedy teoretycznie powinno się to wydarzyć, ale e, przede wszystkim e, nie wiedziałam do końca właśnie, co zmieniłam w swojej grze, żeby, żeby ten wynik zaczął iść w drugą stronę, więc e, no, na pewno było trochę frustracji, ale raczej starałam się rozwiązać ten problem i e, z pomocą właśnie trenera z boksu udało mi się go rozwiązać na początku trzeciego seta. O, o przygotowania do, do tego turnieju. Czy zdążyłaś się nacieszyć medalem i przede wszystkim zregenerować? Bo tego czasu i ten sezon do tej pory był bardzo, bardzo intensywny, nie jak na wiecznie podróżowałeś. Myślę, że nie ma tutaj co oczekiwać, że gdziekolwiek damy radę się zregenerować, bo, no bo wiadomo, że taka odpowiednia regeneracja to w sensie regenerujemy się na tyle, na ile możemy z tym planem, ale nigdy to nie będzie tak, że będę w, na tym etapie sezonu świeża, więc więc dostałam po prostu maksymalną ilość dni wolnego, ile mogę. Też fajnie, że mieliśmy czas, żeby potrenować ogólnie na hardkorcie um, i po prostu gramy z tym, z tym co mamy. I czuję, się, czuję się dobrze um, i staram się właśnie podejść do tego turnieju w pewnym sensie tak bardziej w skupieniu na sobie, bardziej treningowo, żeby te wszystkie rzeczy, które trenowałam, wdrożyć w mecze, um, a wynik nie do końca mnie interesuje tutaj w tym tygodniu. Las, las, las. Padło jeszcze pytanie o, o, o kolejną rywalkę, o rywalkę w kolejnej rundzie. Chciałem zapytać, no bo wspierałaś Ukrainę dosyć, dosyć mocno, czy to ma jakieś, 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 będzie miało jakieś znaczenie dla Ciebie w tym, w tym meczu? Czy, czy na pewno ma trochę znaczenie, może poza kortem, gdy rozmawiamy um, i też grałyśmy w Indian Wells, też to było stosunkowo niedawno, więc myślę, że że sytuacja tutaj się nie zmieni, po prostu obie będziemy profesjonalne i skoncentrujemy się na tenisie, bo mimo wszystko, gdy wychodzimy na kort, to liczy się po prostu to, co, to, co tam zrobimy, ale no wiadomo, z czym muszą się zmagać ukraińskie tenisistki i na pewno nie jest im łatwo. Dziękuję. Thank you. Always good to hear Iga Świątek in her native tongue. This is a press conference after her first match here in the Cincinnati Open after the round of 32. She, a couple hours ago, won her second match in Cincinnati in the round of 16. And then, of course, tomorrow should be in the quarterfinal. Will she win the quarterfinal? I think she will. Uh, will she win the semi? That's where it gets interesting. There's a lot of big-name players still in this tournament here in the United States. There's Huynwen Zhang, correct me in the comments on how to pronounce her name correctly, uh, from China, Arena Sabalenka from Belarus. Um, Leila Fernandez is playing really well. She knocked out Elena Robakina in this one in a three-set thriller. Fernandez has got to be... So excited for that win for her. Uh, Layla is, uh, has been in the U.S. Open final. The U.S. Open is 10 days away. Um, who else is in this one? Um, I, know, I know I'm missing a couple of, couple of players, but um, very interesting. I love the Cincinnati Open. It's basically a warm-up tournament, if you will, before the U.S. Open, which is just 10 days away. Uh, I was reading uh, just before I sat down in this chair that uh, Bianca Andrescu, who is also a former... U.S. Open champion, and Naomi Osaka, another former U.S. Open champion, uh, just got uh, some wild cards into the U.S. Open, so we'll see them. Um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting tomorrow. We're, we're waiting on uh, what time? What time is Iga Świątek playing tomorrow on Saturday? Uh, it's already Saturday right now, I think, in Poland. Right now it's Friday uh, night, about 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m. Central right now here in uh, Dallas, Texas, where we're filming right now, uh, in studio right now in the U.S. So waiting to see what time Shafiantek plays. We'll be anxiously waiting to see what time that's going to happen. And then uh, keeping uh, in the loop. Another another good player still in the U.S. Open is Jessica Pagula. Uh, so she's one that's kind of been uh, not talked about too much uh, for whatever reason, but um, she's... We're rooting for her as well. She's our one of our beloved Americans. Coco Goff, American, uh, got knocked out by Yulia Putinseva. Putinseva actually just lost a couple hours ago to to Bedoza. Is that is that is that who it is? So, um, as far as the Ishvatek playing tomorrow, I'm not too familiar with uh, uh, who she's playing. 
Uh, I'm just not familiar with the player, but I know there's going to be two Olympians on court. Uh, Iggy Shviantek, of course, an Olympian athlete, and then uh, she'll be playing another Olympian uh, tomorrow. I heard that during the press conference today. But the native tongue of Polish. I do not speak it. I have no idea what Iga Shviantek said in this, at the end of this press conference. I love how they get the Polish in there. Let, let us know in the comments, what did she say? And uh, man, I sure wish I was speaking Polish right now. Um, if you're watching in Poland right now, thank you so much. If you're watching in Warsaw or anywhere, any, anywhere else around the country, uh, thank you so much. We look at the analytics of these videos and, and Poland is just, uh, we get so much love from Poland. So thank you so much. Um, I am starving. I am absolutely starving right now. I've been working all day long. Um, there is a thanks button on the bottom right of the video player right there on YouTube, on your phone or on your computer, your laptop, your iPad. It just says the word thanks. You click on it and you can send me money that way. It's super easy. Uh, works all around the world. So thank you so much for that. If you choose to do that, any amount helps. And I will try to eat so I can continue to work on maintaining the muscle and um, trying to be an athlete like Iga Shviantek because we love her so much. Uh, so like I said, yeah, we're waiting for the time tomorrow. And um, who's going to win this one? Last year at Cincinnati Open... Uh, Coco Goff won this tournament and then she went, went on to win her first Grand Slam. And as far as I know, as far as I can recall, Coco Goff's only Grand Slam uh, was last year winning the U.S. Open. You know what I was watching today? It was amazing. I think it was 1996. I was watching a documentary on Steffi Groff. This Hall of Famer, Groff, who's still married to Andre Agassi, um, she, in 1996, won the Australian Open if it wasn't 96, it was in the 90s. This happened. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure it was 96. She won the Australian Open. Then she won the French Open. Then she won the Wimbledon. Then she won the US Open, which completes a Grand Slam. Then she won the gold in the Olympics. I'm just like, what? So I knew that she had won the Grand Slam. I did not know that she won the gold in the same year. That is amazing. And now uh, Groff talked about after she won... The U.S. Open completed the Grand Slam um, by winning all four Grand Slams. Uh, she was exhausted and just wanted to cry. Like, literally, that's her word. She was crying. Um, but uh, it takes a lot out of you. And uh, Djokovic tried to complete uh, the Grand Slam uh, at the end of the year, trying to win the U.S. Open, uh, I think about two or three years ago, but he lost to Daniel Medvedev. Uh, so this is like an impossible thing. Uh, I don't know how many players have done it. Uh, will he, how about this? We'll end we'll end the video on this. Will Iga Shviantek ever do a, will she ever win the Grand Slam, aka winning all four Grand Slams in the same year? You know, um, explain to me in the comments, why does Iga, why is Iga Shviantek not that good on grass? Uh, that's an interesting question for me. I mean, I actually, um, don't know quite the answer to that. I don't even know why 100% why Iggy Shviantek is so good on clay. Um, if you look at a completely different player, uh, for some reason, Pete Sampras is in my brain. Uh, Pete Sampras was never good on clay. He was bad. and uh, But he was a monster on grass and at the U.S. Open. So uh, that's really interesting uh, how different styles of play, different bodies, a different ability can will determine how you're going to play on these different services. Have you ever wondered what would what it be like if we had like a fourth surface? <laughs> so we, we have hard court, we have grass, we have clay. What if we played on in mud? There we go. Grand slam in mud. Let's do it. Best muscle video is this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching here. I got to go. I'm starving. Please use that thanks button and I will talk to you soon. Right back here tomorrow on Saturday for the for the Cincinnati Open. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye.